So, hello everyone. I'm Irene Farfoglia. I'm a student here at, in Trieste. I study data science, scientific computing. And today I'm here, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm here to give you an introduction on explainable artificial intelligence. So, in the next 20 minutes, I'll first give you an introduction on what the problem is, what is what is we're trying to solve, what are the problems we face, and then I'll give you I'll focus the attention for a second on the regulations on explainability in Europe, to then uh, uh, show you some models and techniques that can be used to achieve this, exp this explainability. Lastly, I'll give you an example of explainability applied to ECGs. So, let's first have a look at what is the problem we're trying to solve. First of all, what is this artificial intelligence we're trying to make explainable? The quick answer is, any technique that enables computers or robots controlled by computers to mimic human behavior. Through AI, a system can use math and logic to simulate the reasoning that people, that people use to learn new information and make decisions. A subset of, of artificial intelligence is machine learning, which is composed by all the, those techniques that use, that use uh, statistic, uh, statistic methods to enable machines to improve on their own so with experiences. Throughout my presentation, I will use the two terms almost interchangeably. Not this. Uh, so, why do we need to make this artificial intelligence explainable? Let's start off with an example. In the last few years, the Chinese government has been implementing face recognition techniques throughout uh, major cities in order to identify and find jaywalkers, so people who cross the road when or where they shouldn't. Moreover, they publicly display their face and full name on billboards across the city as a sort of public shaming, if you will. Well, in 2018, this, this system recognized the, the face of the CEO of one of China's top conditioning companies. Her face made all the news, all the billboards, and when she went and made an appeal, they went to check the footage, and they noticed that what the system thought was the woman crossing the road with a red light was actually her face on an ad on the side of a bus. The takeaway here is that intelligent systems can make mistakes. And this right here is the key problem. Recently, there's been a growing desire to implement artificial intelligence systems in high-stakes domains, such as in the medical field or criminal justice or automated driving. And if I were the one to be responsible for their decision or recommendation, I would not want to use and trust a system blindly, knowing it could be making a mistake, especially if there are some, there's a life threat or some amount of money at risk, or in any case, my, my reputation. So I would like to assess the quality and correctness of the model's decision. To do so, uh, we need the AI system provi to provide us an explanation to enable human users to understand and trust its work. So, when we use artificial intelligence systems, many questions can arise. For example, why did you do this and not something else? How do I know that, that you're doing the correct thing right now, that you're right? Because we know that sometimes you make mistakes, that happens. How do I know that I can trust you? And also, very importantly, how do I know that you have not learned some unwanted bias? All of these questions can be solved by making, in fact, the model explainable. With explainability, also, the user can give feedbacks on the model's decisions in a, so that we can improve the model itself and correct possible mistakes or biases. The target user of explainable AI is someone who is not necessarily an expert in machine learning, but is someone who depends on the model's, model's decision or recommendation and needs to understand its rationale in order to uh, effectively trust and manage the system itself. And this is exactly what we want to achieve. We want to provide an explanation from, for, for the system, uh, enable the understanding of its strengths and its weaknesses, and also uh, understand how it will behave in the future. Also, this can also allow, in fact, to, pro to correct possible mistakes. So, how do we do this? We need, uh, there are two main components, explainable models and, explainable, and an explainable interface. interface. <laughs> Explainable models uh, can uh, an explainable model can be either an existing machine machine learning model modified for a task, or can be inferred as a black from a, any black box models with post hoc explainability. Then we need uh, an effective explanation interface. So we need to integrate state, state of the art human computer interaction with an element of psychological explanation in order to create the most effective and, uh, and clear uh, explanation possible. 
So before moving on to models and techniques, the main builder block, I would like to shift the attention for a second on explainability from a legal perspective in Europe. So remember earlier I said that one of the questions that can arise when using machine learning systems is uh, how do I know that you have not learned some unwanted bias? These regulations aim at solving exactly that. For some time now, we've had laws in place against uh, uh, discrimination based on attributes such as gender, race, or age, or disabilities. With uh, uh, European, European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, which was, uh, which was adopted in 2016 and became enforceable beginning May 2018, uh, we aim at solving exactly that. We aim at, at, at uh, enforcing laws in order to avoid discrimination uh, created by artificial intelligence systems. Uh, the GDPR itself uh, has a focus on privacy, while also touching the topics of fairness, transparency, and explainability, which are all very important subjects to the European Commission. So, the article that we, that we need to focus on is Article 22. The, the article itself refers to the right to demand an explanation and alludes to the issues with not having explainability in artificial intelligence systems. Specifically, this article pertains to systems which involve automated decision-making and state that uh, people affected by these decisions have the right to demand an explanation and, to the, right, and the right to demand for humans to be part of the decision-making process so that, so that the responsibilities can be assigned to them, basically. To, to stress how important the GDPR is, I wanted to provide you an example of a time when a machine learning system uh, was not... Uh, uh, was discriminating against part of a population, basically. So, in 2015, Amazon realized that uh, a machine learning program it had been developing for years, made to um, review job applicant CVs, had a huge bias problem, as it was not uh, uh, evaluating the candidates in a gender-neutral way. This happened because... Uh, no, make, so, keep in mind that this was not made to shortlist applicants. It was made by to, on its own, decide who to hire and who not to hire, so without any human supervision. This bias was caused, was caused by the fact that the, the program was made, was, uh, made <coughs> was learned, basically, from uh, tracking patterns from the CVs submitted to the company in the past 10 years, when the, most of the applicants were men. So the, the system itself learned to weigh negatively the word woman in a CV. With the GDPR, this would not have happened and Amazon would, would have been heavily fined, avoiding, in fact, the possibility for such discrimination. So, we can now move on to uh, see some models, some techniques to achieve explainability. <clears throat> so, what explainable models are all about is the trade-off of performance versus explainability. In this graph in the middle, in the middle you can see some techniques you may be familiar with, for example, uh, Support vector machines have good, have good explainability already by themselves, but their prediction accuracy isn't the greatest. On the other hand, with deep learning, we move up the prediction accuracy axis, but they're basically a black box. So we know the input, we know the output, but what, how we get from one to the other is basically unknown. What uh, we want to achieve is moving from the top left of the graph to the top right. So we want to increase explainability without sacrificing uh, learning performance in any way. To do so, we can modify the techniques themselves or uh, infer an explainable model from any model as a black box with, in fact, post hoc explainability, which we'll see in a second. If a model already provides some degree of explainability by itself, it's often referred to as a transparent model. So here we have some examples of post hoc explainability. Going clockwise, starting top left, we have rule-based explanation, which is when the system um, provides its boundaries between the decisions, between, between the options, so basically many if-then statements. To its right, you can, have, you can see an example of prototype-based explanation, which is when, uh, um, which is when the system provides uh, an object which is a set of uh, influential examples in order for the user to view the similarity to other, to other objects. Here, the, we have sentiment analysis of a sentence, and the system is, is in fact providing some influential examples from the training corpus to justify its output. 
underneath, we have an example of counterfactual explanation. In counterfactual explanation, the, a link is provided between what could have happened had the input been modified in a particular way. Here, this person applied for a loan, it was rejected, and the system is providing an example on, of uh, how, what his credential, his credential could have been for the loan to be approved. Lastly, bottom left, we have saliency maps, uh, which are mainly used with images and videos, and uh, we'll see more of them in the example with TCGs, but they basically show where the model is focusing its attention when making the prediction. So, another very important postdoc technique is feature importance, which is in fact a technique which uh, um, assigns a score to, an input, to all the input features based on how useful they are at predicting a target variable. Two important, two useful packages in Python to perform this are two packages, two packages called LIME and SHAP, which are both acronyms. Here you can see I reported some examples of outputs that you can find on their GitHub pages, which are linked in the bottom. As you can see, uh, each feature is given a score based on their contribution to the output and is colored or mapped in the, accordingly. So, we can move on to the ECG example. First, a brief introduction, although I'm pretty sure to some extent all of us are familiar with what ECGs are. ECG, or EKG, stands for electrocardiogram, which is a test that checks the functionality of the heart. This is done by measuring its electrical activity and by placing uh, a number of electrodes to the patient's body, which metaphorically cut the heart from 12 different points of view and, me and measure its electrical activity, creating 12 of what are called leads, and this is an example of the output. In each lead, we can identify some points, some intervals, and some segments, which we can analyze in order to assess the proper function of the heart. For example, a number of conditions modify the ST, ST segment, here in purple, and, well, a short QRS complex assures proper function. So, uh, moving to seeing some results from, the, from some papers, here we have two examples of well, two saliency maps on ECGs. On the top one, we can see that the ECG was treated as a two-dimensional image, and uh, the map itself shows where the model was focus focusing its attention when looking for premature ventricular complex. Instead, on the bottom one, the ECG was treated as a one-dimensional image, and uh, the parts which were more, more, most influential to the output were highlighted with a deeper color. Lastly, this is the paper that I'm, I'm most passionate about. Uh, this paper was published in May 2021, so very recent, and uh, amongst other things, its authors set out to predict the biological sex of the, of the patient based solely on their ECG. This is a, a very difficult task, almost impossible task, even for the most trained cardiologist, but their convolutional neural network managed to obtain an 89% accuracy. And here we can see another possible, another important uh, uh, property of explainable AI, as the accuracy output by itself does not give any clue or information into how the prediction was made. Instead, with this attention map, we can clearly see that the, that the model focused its attention on the QRS complex and specifically on the downslope of the R wave when making its prediction, offering, in fact, a new insight into electrophysiology. So, a recap of what we saw. Explainable artificial intelligence is a set of tools and frameworks that help understand and interpret predictions made by machine learning models. This is done uh, by, uh, this can be accomplished through pre-existing or adequately modified models or through postdoc inference on black box models. All of this work can be, can be carried out in order to build trust and provide elucidations on what otherwise would be, uh, in fact, black box systems. As a nice addition, as we, as, as we saw with ECGs, uh, with an explainable AI, we can also get new insights into the topic of study. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it and somehow inspired you to dive deeper into this very new topic of research. So the more the merrier, I guess. And following this QR code, you can find the link to the slides, the references for what I said in the last 20 minutes, as well as some of my contacts.